Hello everyone and welcome to another Fat Logic video. Uh, today we are just going to jump right into it. So we're starting off the day with Lindo Bacon's open letter to the Association for Size, Diversity, and Health. This was just on April 30th. We're not going to read the whole thing because it's very long, but I'm going to go over just this, just before this line here. I write this open letter to the Association for Size, Diversity, and Health in response to the defamatory letter posted on their blog written by ASDAH's leadership team. In deference to the concerns expressed by ASDAH's leadership team, I will not be updating my 14-year-old Health at Every Size book. I will no longer promote the Health at Every Size name though I remain committed to advocating for the values we share. I have taken down HayesCommunity.org. I apologize to those in the greater Hayes community who may be disappointed with these decisions. I remain committed to examining ways in which I can do better and to learn from the constructive criticism that may help me achieve it. This is some fucking bullshit. I mean, honestly, if we, like, I still need to do the Hayes Reading Group um, recording for the Health at Every Size book, but, like, if we do cover that one, um, we're gonna take a look at this whole fucking batshit crazy, I have not been staying on top of it because I, I didn't think it would quite go this far, quite frankly, and I thought it was just gonna be a little side note, I was not expecting this to, to happen, but it's just, it's fucking bonkers. They are the ones that wrote this fucking book. They are the ones that started the whole Hayes movement with their book. They are the ones that started this whole thing, and yet you say that they are somehow wrong. Like, I don't, I don't fucking get it. This, I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone. Honestly, you are turning on someone that advocated for you when no one else would before this whole thing even became the social media movement that it is now and you turned on them you are setting this fucking association for size diversity and health is setting up their own demise doing this shit you want to demonize anyone that is at a healthy bmi you are destroying your own movement, which is fine with me. I can find something else to react to. But you are destroying your own movement. And the funny thing is, is that all the TikTok fat logic people that I follow have been fairly quiet. They've just been doing TikTok dances for the past few weeks. Um, and even the fat logic subreddit has been slower with some of its content. If this continues, I'm probably going to branch out a little bit and will try some of the other reddits like... Um, RPG horror stories, am I the asshole, monster-in-law, or just no mother-in-law, um, entitled people, entitled parents, choosing beggars, that sort of thing. We'll take a look at some of those other ones because those people are equally really ridiculous, but the fat acceptance movement is eating itself. It's own gluttony for attention at this point is causing it to consume it itself it's it's like there was a mothy song i don't know if you guys were ever into vocaloid but there was a mothy song for the different there was this it was this humongous storyline spanning like 200 songs but there was a sub storyline in there just based on the seven deadly sins and there was a song i believe it was baroness conchita uh who ended up eating everything in sight to the point where she became a cannibal and then she ate herself because she was just so consumed with gluttony. And that's what this fat acceptance movement is becoming. They have become so gluttonous. It's not just about being represented. It's not just about being accepted. It's not just about be the, their concerns being taken seriously. They want ultimate control. They want to demonize anyone that is at a healthy BMI or trying to lose weight. They want this all-consuming rhetoric to be perceived as what must be done, as an imperative. And they are eating themselves now. They are eating themselves. The fat acceptance movement, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better still. Um, 
because these people are, I mean, when something's about to die, rarely does it go quietly, die quietly, rarely does it go into the, rarely does it go into the dark night peacefully. So it's going to explode before it peters out. It hasn't quite, I mean, it, it's had a few eruptions, but not a big one yet. And it's going to explode at some point, and it's going to destroy itself. And I will be here recording that. But right now, we are in the eye of the storm, I think. And that's why there's been a lot of quiet going on. But we'll see. We'll see where this takes us. Pretty sure I know who needs to hear this, but yeah, this adults need 2,000 calories a day on every menu is bollocks. You need over 1,100 a day just to be able to sleep. 2,000 might do if you were in a fucking coma. Fuck that noise. You don't burn nearly as much as you think you do. Like, on my fitness tracker, I've reached the point where, like, with the MyFitnessPal, I can... I could eat 3,000 calories. I walked 25,000 steps and over 10 miles that day. It was a very busy day. Um, I don't think I actually ended up eating all 3,000 calories. I ended up eating more than I normally do just because I was starving. But, no, 2,000 calories based on a moderate level of exercise is perfectly reasonable. You... The fat acceptance movement completely overestimates how much the body actually burns. I wish Yiddy actually had inclusive sizing. Don't let the 6X fool you. A 6X in Yiddy is a 26-28. At universal standard, they use a size chart that reflects the true woman's bell curve of American women's sizes. A 4X is a 38-40. to 40. And they actually included... The universal standard and this and I don't mind sharing my measurements here but I would fit squarely in a small for this and I am NOT a small I have 35 waist 46 hip 44 bust I would fit squarely in a size small which is fucking bonkers it's just fucking bonkers. No, I'm sorry. I don't think that we should adopt this. I don't. I'm not a size small. Not even fucking close. I am a large to an extra large. Which, not by this standard, but by the average one. I don't, I disagree with this wholeheartedly. What from the Washington Department of Health Twitter. Diet culture promotes and is grounded in anti-fatness. It contributes to eating habits that are bad for our health by teaching us not to trust our bodies. On hashtag no diet day, focus on nourishing your whole self and overall well-being. Hashtag intuitive eating, hashtag body trust. This is very close to where I live. I, I'm in a neighboring state. This is, this is a, this is a thing. This is 100% what's going on. Um. Actually, part of the reason, like, the primary reason why I hide my face and I'm careful about the information that I give out, largely, is because my school district actually had a training. This was just before COVID, so this was in October of 2019, about equity. And in that equity training... Uh, the director of equity came out and one of the things that she talked about was fat phobia and how it's connected to anti-blackness and anti-POC. If I showed my <laughs> face on here and I was a little too loud, um, I could like potentially not get a teaching job because of shit like this. I, I'm not, I wish I was kidding, but... There was a thing with calling out fat phobic rhetoric. It was included in a lesson on microaggressions. Um, and they, their general concern was that if you talk about weight loss or something and you're making 
fat people feel bad, then you're likely making fat children feel bad too and you can't be a good teacher and you can't be inclusive and you can't be sensitive to children's needs if you don't embrace um, intuitive eating and and like the, the whole um, set point theory as the fat acceptance movement has it. So like this is, this is, I wish I could say this was a joke, but it's not. This is literally what's going on. I'm not comfortable with thin people who think they're the shit. Sorry, but I think your brain is too thin. It hasn't been fed enough to have intelligent thoughts. Go eat a hull cake. Actually, I think there was a study that showed that if you're overweight, you're more likely to be less intelligent. Like, normal body weights, like, according to BMI, have an average to higher level IQ, but those that are overweight or obese have a average to lower level IQ. Now, granted, this mean would mean I fall into that average to lower level IQ, um, if that were... True, and there's a potential that it is, but it's uh, going based on averages. I don't think I have a lower than average IQ. Um, when I was younger, I was obsessed with IQ. Uh, to the point where, like, I took the out-home Mensa test, and uh, I was about 17. I didn't qualify. Uh, you have to have at least an IQ of 130 to get in. I think I was at squarely at 115. Like, I, I think that's still within a standard deviation of normal. So I'm, like, barely above average. It's, and as I've gotten older, IQ means a lot less to me. But for the sake of this post, actually, for at least the, the studies that I remember, granted, don't quote me on this, because I haven't looked at those studies in a long time, and... Better studies have probably come out since then, but from what I remember, um, like the the smartest people were at an average or like at a at a healthy weight to like slightly overweight, like uh, within within the lower end of overweight. If you're obese, it don't work for you. False. Even just a modest weight loss of 5-10% to 10 of your total body weight is likely to produce health benefits. Truth. Intentional weight loss results in weight cycling, weight gain, guilt, shame, poor body image, binge eating, loss of body trust, and lower self-esteem. Disagree! <laughs> Disagree, bitch! This is so dumb. This is so dumb. Okay, no. One... The 5 to 10 percent of your body weight, losing 5 to 10 percent of your body weight is likely to produce health benefits. This is slightly taken out of context. It's 5 to 10 percent of your body weight if you are outside of a he healthy BMI range. Um, and statistically, yes, you it will produce uh, health benefits. This intention, intentional weight loss results in weight cycling, weight gain, guilt, shame, poor body image, binge eating, loss of body trust, and lower self-esteem. I do think that this can happen for some people. However, to, to present this as though it is unavoidable and will always happen is not, is not a good faith representation. It's possible that some of this will happen, but... Especially with um, poor body image, lower self-esteem, I actually found that I think, I think if you're just like highly restricting your eating, then yeah, it may not work so well. But I think doing it in conjunction with exercise, I feel better about my body than I have at any other point in my life, and I think it's because I'm exercising more and I'm working on making myself feel better and I'm not as concerned with the overall look. The overall look, the aesthetic of having a thinner body is still kind of important to me, but how I feel is even more important. I've been able to, so I start my run and the way it worked out before was I could run about a quarter of a mile before I had to stop. I've been able in two weeks to increase that by a tenth of a mile which is really awesome for me. I, I was quite proud of that. So I can now go 0.35 of a mile before needing to take a walking break. 
um, that boosts my self-esteem. That boosts my body image. I can feel my legs handle the run better. And I'm, granted, I've hit a bit of an impasse with my weight loss at the moment, but I still think that continuing to lose weight is what's going to be best for me. So I just, I don't like this weight cycling, weight gain, guilt, shame, poor body image, binge eating, loss of body trust. What is this body trust? We saw that in one of the other ones too. This is a new term for me. What is body trust? Maybe we'll take a look into that on the next video. So, sorry this video is again kind of short. I think next week we'll still do the Hayes we'll still do the Hayes book club videos. Um a couple of people have suggested a couple of videos to watch and react to. I think I might do that. We'll take a break from the fat logic and the TikTok fat phobia people. Um, I'm also thinking, just because Virgie has so much to go through, um, to kind of separate it out from the, because we'll, we'll have plenty to go through over the summer. I think I might, we might explore some of Virgie's Forbes articles. What do you, what do you think? Instead of having the Fat Logic video next week, just because it seems to be slowing down a little bit, I think we'll see a resurgence come summer when there's going to be all those things on like beach bodies and, and that sort of thing. Um, cause right now we're kind of in a lull between, uh, the new year's resolution weight loss thing that, that idea kind of hits its bottom by spring break at the latest, typically about mid March is when that stops being such a big thing. And then I think we are going to have a lull, and then summer is going to hit. June, mid-June is going to hit, and I think we're going to see more. And then it's going to probably decrease a bit come August. And then I get the feeling that something's going to happen around the back-to-school or maybe Halloween time. And then policing, about policing yourself during the holidays and stuff. I think we're going to see some stuff then. And then the cycle of, you know, don't worry about this because people typically worry about this around weight is going to continue again next January. So we shall see, but I think we're in a lull period right now for this content. So um, a couple of people have recommended some videos, so I'm going to take a look at that. And then we might diversify it a little bit with some other Reddit content. Um, as for me, uh, there's only six weeks left of school and I'm feeling the burnout. I'm feeling the burnout. I'm ready to be done for not, not only with the whole lesson planning thing for the year, cause it's been a little exhausting and the kids are so fucking done. It's so much harder to manage the class right now because everyone is done. And it's not just me because I push in uh, because I work with kids that whose English is their second language. I push in to uh, some of their main classes like science, math, uh, English literature and social studies. And I push in to, to help scaffold the um, language that they need to understand those subjects. And... Those classes are off the fucking walls, too, so I know it's not just me. Like, the kids, apparently, I, I've been told, especially in middle school, like, I'm used to it with the elementary school kids because I had a job in an elementary schools before this, but this is my first year in middle schools. Um, apparently, in middle school, like, the kids just don't give a fuck. Come after, like, come May after spring break and stuff, like, they just... It's impossible to get anyone to stay focused too long. So lessons have to be a little bit more in, engaging and less lecture based and stuff. So it's, there's a lot when it comes to that. Um, I also st tried my first kendo class this week. I don't really know how I feel about it yet. I didn't hate it, um, but I didn't love it either. I'm going to give it it's a 13 class series. I'm going to give it till about lesson six. And if I really am not feeling it, I'm going to just eat whatever money I had 
left when I uh, that I paid for the classes because I don't want to keep putting my time into something I don't love. But I, at the same time, I want to give Kendo like a fair shake and give it like a true give it a true try. As for my weight, I did not weigh myself this weekend. I'm staying on my program, but I'm just gonna take. Um, I'm only a few days out from my cycle, and I just don't want to weigh myself today. So, I'm going to give it another week, and then I'll weigh myself again. But, I think that's about it. So, thank you for watching. I hope you're having a lovely week. Thank you to everyone for your reassuring comments on last week's Fat Logic. You guys made me feel a lot better about that four-pound gain. Um, and I've decided to just take a couple weeks off from weighing myself, but sticking to the program. And we'll see how it is next week. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.